You asked for it. Here it is. It's a podcast from Apathetic Enthusiasm. Coming to you live from a new year and a new season of Rick and Morty. Look, I'm not going to waste all of my energy here in the intro. No way. Because today, we're talking about Season 5. Oh yeah, here on Interdimensional RSS, the unofficial Rick and Morty podcast. It's very, it's very important to conserve that energy, Brandon. That's, that's, uh, it's good. It's good that you should. Yeah. I'm, drink, I'm drinking coffee right now, as a matter of fact, just wow. so I get that extra, extra boost. You're going you're gonna to get, you're going to, you're going to peak. You're going to, your heart's going to burst mid episode. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Travis. Hello, everybody. I am Brandon and welcome to the show where we, where we talk about, of all things in this world, in this life, Rick and Morty. Oh, we, we, we couldn't be, we couldn't be happier or more excited to be here with you today. Of, of all the things there is to talk about, we are the ones that get to talk about Rick and Morty. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so so happy. It is it is an exciting time in the fandom of, of Rick and Morty because we have a new episode to talk about. It is finally out. Uh, people have seen it. People have discussed it. And and this is our opportunity to discuss it with you. So so thank you for tuning back in. If you if you have been gone for a little while, welcome back. We're we're so happy to have you back. Uh, but w- we have been putting in the work, uh, mm-hmm. week in and week out. Well, month in and month out. It, I mean, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> uh, but but we do have some episodes. Feel free to go back and check those out. And uh, if if you miss us in between episodes, you can always follow us on social media. Uh, we have lots of links and places where you can follow us. Of course, out on Twitter at Rick and Morty Pod. You can also follow us on Facebook if you're a Facebook user, uh, Rick and Morty Podcast, and then Rick Morty Podcast at Gmail dot com is where you can send us an email. We are all over the the web. This this episode right now you can find out on Rick and Morty dot Reddit dot com, the official Rick and Morty subreddit. You can also follow our subreddit, Rick and Morty Podcast dot Reddit dot com. Or find all of our episodes, maybe some of the ones you missed during the break, like our awesome Vindicators interview that we did last week, uh, out yeah, at yeah. rickandmortypod.com. Uh, we, we're we on the internet with our faces now. Maybe maybe this is new <laughs> to you. Maybe you've missed this. You can, you can find us at youtube.com slash apatheticenthusiasm for video versions of the, these episodes. And uh, we, tw- we stream now. We oftentimes stream live. Our, our episodes at twitch.tv slash apathetic enthusiasm follow all over all of those sites uh get notified when we go live all of those fun things uh and then finally there's a patreon patreon.com slash apathetic enthusiasm where you can support the show directly and uh and get some more perks throughout the season uh brandon how yeah you, how, how you feeling how how, uh, how, how are you doing <laughs> uh you, you went I'm feel I'm feeling pretty good. Here's here's the thing about a Rick and Morty podcast when when there's when there's large swaths of space and time in between seasons, uh, you you start you start to you start getting a, in a habit. We're like, okay, what are we gonna what are we gonna make a new episode about? And and we get some interviews, which is really cool. It's, it's reinvigorating. And then we do the actual the season comes out. The actual season comes out, and then all of a sudden we feel very very nervous about about recording a new episode all of a sudden it's like, it's like what do we what do we do again how how what, does this show work oh god what's our what are our social media what are our social media um but uh, the thing the th- the real cool thing is is uh you know folks move on and and they want to they start, you know, new shows come out, different series roll around. They maybe they go to Solar Opposites and and watch some of what's going on over there, or Tuca and Birdie, which is now on on Adult Swim. Sure. But uh, but then a new season comes out and people start coming back. And uh, so on back this podcast, into the <laughs> back into the fold, uh, like when you're when you're making like a like a cake. I think you're supposed to fold in the, yeah, the, just fold the in. powdered sugar. Just fold it in, David. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. Welcome back unity. Welcome back to the, uh, to the assimilation. Um, and not that we've changed too much since you've been gone, but for those of you that are coming back, we want to, we want to short you out right away. We want to recognize some folks who have stuck with us. Some folks who are helping to promote the podcast on their own social media. Uh, and, and so normally reserved for the end of an episode. 
but, but this we're, is important. We're gonna this is important. Gonna- this is important. Uh, Travis is like, I want to do this, and I was like, No, Travis, we have to stick to a format. Yeah. Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> every episode has been exactly the same. We've never changed. <laughs> never, never changed. So, if if this is the first time listening, uh, we we thank you for for listening. Uh, for for uh, the other folks, uh, we start off with you know. We, this is how we end the episode, but let's let's get some of these short outs out. Uh, at Jimmy underscore D three aka Suli Jimmy aka Suli, uh, shot out a tweet uh, earlier this week. Said, "Ooh, we raise your hand if you're ready for more Rick and Morty." Is Rick and Morty pod all queued up? Oh, and uh, and and of course we responded, "Hell yeah, we are." And uh, he, he shot a, a a a gift back of Morty doing the dance. He said, "I can't do this in real life because Kane." Uh, Sorry, I ignored you guys during my Rick and Morty list depression. My bad, bruh. Like, don't worry about it, Jimmy. We're don't worry. You're We're the fold that. is here. Yeah. The fold is here. Yeah. Uh, appreciate appreciate Jimmy underscore D three uh, doing that and uh, and shorting us out. Uh, we we short That's you right. right back. We short you right back. Right back. Right right back at you, pal. Uh, there was a there was an exchange here, and this is this is a very very flattering exchange. Uh, between NR underscore originals and Gog Gog Kieran. Uh, I so, apologies if I, I mispronounced it. It's, it's spelled like rogue. Show notes. <laughs> but anyways, uh, they uh, NR had had sent out uh, an initial tweet, and then Gog came in and started talking about it, and uh, you know, saying that they love the show. Uh, Gog came in saying, "I love the show too, especially the transition music," which. Hey, Travis, we'll get to. He, he, keeps, we'll get to. he keeps trying to get rid of it, but, um, and, and, and they went on to, to talk about how it, it, you know, we have in, inspired them in some way for their Rick and Morty shows, uh, which it, it, incredibly humbling because honestly, we, we don't feel any kind of uh, special way about doing this show. Like we're, we're just, we're just two regular dudes or two, two dudes, two brothers, two, two uh, brothers do- just in a, in a van. <laughs> Uh, then a meteor hits. Uh, yeah, no, we 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 definitely appreciate that, and and congrats to you for for getting into podcasting and and producing your own your own take on on episodes and things like that. So yeah, I mean it's that's awesome, and I'm flattered that that you enjoy a somewhat improvisational feel that happens on this episode or any episode of this podcast. So yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for the short outs on, on Twitter. Um, in terms of Twitch, we, we are having fun out on Twitch. want to give a, a short out to Rick and Morty fan show, who, which, which might be Gog by the way, could be, uh, because, could be. could, because I'm just, I'm just throwing, throwing that out there. Yeah. Thank thank you for following. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it crosses over. So another, another Twitch worth following. Um, and then, and then what's going on on Reddit, brother. And then, then on, then on Reddit, uh, I, I, I posted our vindicators inter- interview with, with Erica and Sarah, uh, and, uh, you know, some, some, there was some interaction going on there. Um, I was interacting with, with Mr. Underscore spooky underscore about their least favorite episodes. Uh, which second least favorite episode is Interdimensional Cable Two, uh, but they said he or she said uh, it says Mister, but you know it could still be a, a she. Uh, big fan of the podcast, by the way. Uh, so I just again reaching out. Thank you, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thanks, thanks to everybody that that mentions us all over the social internet, and maybe maybe this is the episode where you want to to share on on your <laughs> on your Twitter on Facebook, wherever it is. Um, if you tag us, uh, share this episode, there is a very high probability that you will get a short out in an upcoming episode. So thank you to everybody that does that, supports the show. I mean, I mean, really, that's one of the best ways that you can support what we're doing is just by sharing it uh, with your social circle. So thanks to everybody that does that. We are so excited for this season and excited to short out many more of you. All right, Brandon, are you ready? For uh, yeah. what is what is truly oh. the first segment of of this show, uh, it is time for that sweet sweet transitional music and <laughs> semi pertinent news. Walk a walk a walk a walk a walk. You gotta walk the walk. You gotta walk the walk. You gotta talk the talk. You gotta talk the talk. You gotta walk a walk a talk.
walk. You gotta walk the walk. You gotta semi pertinent news. You gotta walk the walk. You gotta talk a talk a news. You gotta walk the talk. You walk. You walk. You walk. You walk. Semi pertinent news brought to you by Wendy's. <laughs> brought to you by Morty's. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, man, we were, ta- we're talking. I wish we, we were talking about walk, walk. Wendy's <laughs> sp- uh, sponsorship. Uh, but we are not Adult Swim. We are not no. Rick and Morty. Uh, no, so, how? Which does have that sweet, sweet Wendy's uh, endorsement and a lot of Wendy's action happening in the news right now. Of course, the announcements that um, Wendy's. I mean, they're stepping up their game, right? They're 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 taking it a level higher. O- obviously, yeah. there was a great Rick and Morty crossover commercial with Wendy's promoting their breakfast sandwiches in season <laughs> four. Uh, we got to see that numerous times over and over again during the season. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're going even further this season. And now fans across the country can enjoy custom Coca-Cola freestyle mixes uh, and free Wendy's delivery. Hot dang. Hot, Hot. dang. Hot dang indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and and that's to to celebrate the Global Rick and Morty Day Sunday, June twentieth. Um, so yeah, there are two flavors. If you can find a Wendy's in your area that has the Coca Cola freestyle machines, because <laughs> let me tell you, this is not a guarantee. I went to not <laughs> one, not two, but four. Four Wendy's locations wow. in the Oklahoma City area, uh, and the fourth one I, I called ahead because after three I was like, "All right, I I'm just wasting <laughs> gas at this point." Uh, so I called ahead. I was like, "Hey, do you got a freestyle machine?" They're like, "Yeah." I was like, "Cool, you got the Rick and Morty drinks?" They're like, "Yeah." I was like, "Cool, I'll be there soon." Um, that's, that's that that's how that's how I felt when I'd go through McDonald's drive-through looking for Szechuan sauce a couple <laughs> years back. We're like, "Do you guys have any Szechuan sauce?" I'm like, Yes. Yeah, you're one of <laughs> I'll those, be there. Huh? Okay. <laughs> I'll be there soon. Yeah. So so two flavors that you can choose from. We have mellow yellow portal time lemon lime and mellow yellow berry jerry berry. Uh yes. these these are also available in zero sugar options. Mm. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching your figure. Um yeah, went in uh Bought both of them. Not not a big soda drinker anymore. I've I've sort of laid off soda. I'm you know that's just a personal note. Uh, but you know I took one for the team. We went out. Yeah. We bought the 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 sodas. I I know Brandon. You had a much much more intense Morty's experience. But did you get to try these these flavors of beverage? I I did. Yeah yeah yeah. I I had. Uh, I went with my son, and we tried both flavors. Okay. Um, he wa- he wanted the lemon lime. Uh, I, therefore, I got the the berry jerry berry. Um, and yeah, I mean they're 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 good, right? The the lemon lime is is a fancier kind of sprite. Uh, maybe maybe like closer to lemonade a, a little bit. I I I think upon several tastes, I I felt like it tasted almost like a Mountain Dew. Like, uh, like yeah. it was it was pretty heavy, and I, maybe it's just how my freestyle machine was. Oh yeah, was, was configured, but if it, it tasted pretty like heavy on the old lemon lime, and, and I don't uh. drink Mellow Yellow. I'm sorry to the Mellow Yellow organization. This is not a slight <laughs> against you. I don't, I don't, I don't know that I'd ever had Mellow Yellow before. It's it's not that we have anything against you, Mellow no, Yellow. It's not, I, it's I, not I, person. I only knew Mellow Yellow from Days of Thunder, the Tom Cruise classic, and I didn't know it was a drink. I just I thought that was a made up car. As a matter, of, you know, being from the West Coast, also uh, the Hardee's car I thought was another made up brand. Yeah, you're like they're just using the Carl's Jr. logo with a made up <laughs> brand. That's weird. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, okay. You you then you tried the Berry Jerry Bree. Which which one of those did you prefer? Oh, start with the Berry Jerry Bree. What did you think of that one? I I preferred Berry Jerry Bree. Um, I don't know. I think I f- it was a little too much citrus. I think for me in uh, in in the the portal time lemon lime. So I mm-hmm. I I ended up like sticking to the Berry Jerry. And uh, and allowing the kids to fight over the uh, time portal, uh, or portal time lemon lime. So, uh, yeah. they, they they fought over it, huh? Yeah, they're um. They, they love everywhere. that one. 
It's it's, it's a regular <laughs> blood dome battle league out there. <laughs> blood, go. Uh, I I prefer the Barry Jerry overall as well. Yeah. Uh, I had, I had a hard time actually enjoying the flavors of the drinks uh, because I was also eating at the same time and oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which. Uh, my my son, who's who's nine, was like, we should eat at Wendy's more often because this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, that's it, it's it's doing the job right. The 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 Wendy's promotions, they're they're uh, they're yeah. getting people in the door. So they're- so yes, uh, people all over the country in participating locations, you can try these flavors. But if you're fortunate enough this weekend to be in the Los Angeles area. You may have had the opportunity to visit the Morty's pop up shop, uh, the weekend long restaurant pop up in Panorama City. Uh, oh, so, so um, Brandon, you actually visited the pop up shop. Tell tell us all about it. Tell us about your experience, how how it went, what what was different about it. I want I want to know all the details. Because we because we have a season five premiere to get after here, I'll, I'll try I'll nope, try to keep this. Nope. Show. People don't want to know about Mr. Nimbus. <laughs> they don't want to know about the show. They want to know about Wendy's. Marketing. That's right. Because because you Unity, you've already watched the episode. You know all about that. Yeah. What you don't know is not all of you aren't in LA, and, and so yeah, you want to hear this experience. I get I get it. You're right, Travis. You're right. I'm I'm being selfish. Uh, <laughs> The the Panorama City Wendy's that was con- configured into a Morty's restaurant w- is about about an hour away from where I live, and I I left my house around nine because I wanted uh, I'm like well maybe they're serving bre- I, maybe that's not even set up yet but you know screw it I'll just I'll go and and if it's not if it's not open if it's not fully set up I mean sure they're I'm sure they're gonna get inflatables and stuff out there. Sure. Uh, I called just to be sure, but then they, nobody picked up. I'm like, okay, then I'll, maybe they were busy happened. a little. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. So I get, I, I we we get there, and uh, I I pull into the parking lot, and the first thing you see is a, a gigantic Morty inflatable with its mouth with his mouth open, and it's it's a Morty that looks kind of like the the Wendy's Morty, uh, and. I'm like oh okay, so I, I see the cars are pulling out of there. So I'm like oh okay, it's it, there's like a little tunnel uh, that that's a drive through, and go around, and then you see a giant inflatable Rick uh, with its mouth gaping open, and that's where the cars are going into. So I just follow the path, and uh, I basically the, there's a an old uh, not Circuit City but a Montgomery Ward. There's an old Montgomery Ward that was shut down. It was an empty parking lot, and there's just white cones all over the place. And it was the parking lot is massive, and there's just you know Wendy's and security employees with flags like waving you down and and and, and forcing you into a, a queue. Uh, we were there about 30, 40 minutes, I, I guess, in in this queue, maybe 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 a little bit less. There they had co-opted a a radio station, ninety point five. And they were playing Rick and Morty music, so you some some chaos, chaos in there, uh, flu hate and rap, <laughs> all the all the rapper, all the all the classic Rick and Morty songs, um, and then eventually you know you get you get up there, they hand you a little cardboard menu, uh, which I I left downstairs, oops, um, and it has you know it, it shows like the the Morty and the the Wendy's out get up. And it's, shows your your menu options which are, i mean they're pretty much just standard uh wendy's fare the only difference is a, a jerry's burger single uh which they weren't serving because it wasn't 11 yet okay order go through rick's mouth and when you go into rick's mouth they say you know roll down your windows um because the music is playing and there's there's music going on and there's like there's these gigantic led screens that surround the drive through and there's there's animations going on uh there's you know there's a there's a giant portal that periodically rick or morty uh, pop out of and they just kind of like they like finger finger point at you and, and wink and they go back into the portal uh there's like a weird like kaleidoscopy 
uh, montage of characters. It, it just, you know, it's very, very, very cool. It's, it's short. You're waiting in line to, to get your food. And then, then when you pull out of Morty's mouth, you can stop, get out of the car, and uh, one of the employees will take a picture of you outside the car with the Morty mouth in the background. And so I, uh, so I, so I did that. Um, they were supposed to have a limited edition Pickle Rick Frosty there, um, but it might have been too early for that. Maybe not until after lunchtime or maybe later on in the evening. So I didn't get a chance to, to try it out. But, I mean, it was, it was really cool. Like, I, I just moved here uh, two months ago. And then so now they have this and I just realized how weird it is to be so close to the epicenter of where they're going to be doing this type of, you know, publicity stuff. You're, you're, you're a new man on the street. You're, you're, you're <laughs> the guy who can you're the guy that knows how to get things. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, you're the, the guy that anytime there's anything special in L.A., you're the one that's going to have to do it because <laughs> I'm thousands of miles away. But, you know, the second. The second they throw those Midwest pop-ups out there, I'm your man. I got That's it. That's right. I got it, Brandon. <laughs> um, well, very there, cool. I, I I don't know. I'm I'm upset you didn't get to try the pickle frosty because that's just that just sounds terrible. Uh, but <laughs> I, it I it does it does uh, uh, well. We, this is it seems like we're destined not to try any of the pickle Rick flavored anything. No, right? No uh, pickle beverages for these podcasters. No, no, uh, the, the like the miracle seltzer, we didn't get to try theirs. Uh, we didn't, I, I didn't get to try this pickle Rick Frosty. Um, it's we're, um, it's not it's it's not destined to happen. And I'm I'm a, I I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, you're um, you're probably better off for it. <laughs> the the last thing I want to say uh, for folks who want to try the two drinks, uh, you know, call up your participating Wendy's, see 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 if the see if they are participating. Uh, but it's going all the way till August 22nd. And the reason this is an important date is because we have confirmation based off the press release that it is going to the end of season five, which yeah. means there's not going to be a break uh, when in episodes for season five. Right. Every week is going to be a new episode, basically. Yeah, that's 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 pretty crazy. That's, I, I mean, it's it's going to keep us busy. I know that's for sure. Um, but, you know, it's good. It's good stuff. It's I'm, good stuff. It's good stuff, and and we know yeah. now. We know we're we're in in the know. So <laughs> we are in the know. Before before we move on to our last segment of semi pertinent news, uh, I do want to I do want to do Brandon's Reddit post of the week. That's right, Reddit post of the week, bam, uh, bam, where bam, I bam. I sometimes do this and then sometimes forget because I'm too busy with my life. Uh, this one is from Vegeta Archer uh, four days ago. It's got eighteen thousand upvotes. And it's a general discussion. It says, does anyone else appreciate how Rick and Morty treats the sexual abuse of men with seriousness and doesn't play it off as a joke? And it has a picture of uh, Mr. Jellybean, King Jellybean, and Morty. Uh, also, uh, J- Jerry getting sexually assaulted by the, the Titanic lady. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it within the comments, there's some good discussion uh, about it. And basically, you know, uh, I think one one comment mentions, uh, yeah, a giant jelly bean is is treating it as it's weird that He's we're taking it we, seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's not treating it as a joke because it's a giant yeah. jelly bean. Yeah, because it's a giant jelly. Bean. But, but like Rick immediately recognizing signs, uh, warning signs, yeah. and then and then taking taking him out. So, anyways, shout out to you, Vegeta Archer, and. Speaking of speaking of social media, there's one last thing we got to do before you know the 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 thing that we do, and it's the Dan Harmon social media minute. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> 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 Post every, on the internet. <laughs> we'll just do that every time you finish that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dan Harmon social media minute. All right, everybody. Uh, important business to attend to. Um, yeah, Dan Harmon, the executive producer, co-creator of uh, Rick and Morty, he he only posts on Instagram. He's not on Twitter, but uh, we still we still like to signal boost him because you know he's he's still only got a few followers. <laughs> uh, so so this post uh, is is a post of uh, a Wikipedia article, and uh, the Wikipedia article is called Hobby Tunneling. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Hobby Tunneling or Tunneling. 
is tunnel construction as a diversion. Usually hobby tunnelers dig their tunnels by hand using little equipment, and some can spend years or even decades to achieve any degree of completion. In some cases, tunnels have been dug secretly and only discovered by chance. And Dan's caption for this is, how many hobbies have I needless, needlessly des- denied myself because I didn't know they could be hobbies? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so, so yeah, and, and this, uh, this plays into Dan Harmon's uh, various types of hobbies, right, where he uh, has built an entire wood shop in his new house. Um, obviously, he's into... Uh, video editing and and doing all, all sorts of different creative things. Um, so if you live anywhere near Dan Harmon, uh, there is a possibility that uh, <laughs> tunnels could be popping up in your area very soon. Yeah, um, be careful. Yeah, be just just uh, you know, call before you dig. You you never know whose whose fiber lines uh, you might cut. Uh, you don't want to affect anyone's internet uh, because that's you're, true. You know, because you're digging <laughs> tunnels uh, where you shouldn't be. You know what? You know what's? You know what's? You know what's interesting, Travis. I, and I, I don't. I don't know if this is coincidence, but in my in the house that I moved into in the backyard, there's a bunch of holes showing up randomly. I'm not going to say it's Dan Harmon. New hobby, or or that it, or that it's gophers. But yeah, you know, it might it might be that. Not not Just, ruling anything out. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, all right, so so that's that's what Dan is posting about over on Instagram. If you want to follow him, he's at Dan Harmon. Um, all right, that is it for our semi-pertinent <laughs> news. Obviously, lots of things happening. Uh, Global Rick and Morty Day. Uh, lots of events broadcasting the show out in space. Very, very cool things happening. Um, yeah, let us know what you guys think of, of any of these news stories or if you see a semi-pertinent rick and morty news story make sure to send that to us over at rick and morty pod or send us an email rick and morty podcast at gmail.com we will feature it in an episode should you do so um all right i think that's the end of the episode right brandon i think that's pretty it much, pretty yeah much unity done. yeah thanks um, thanks again for all all that you do and 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 all your listening time wait wait no there's there's more written here it, <laughs> it looks like oh there's a page break oh yeah so embarrassing. So embar- all Dude. right. Well, I guess uh, I guess the only thing left is uh, the main thing. Is not the one that we're doing. <laughs> it's the main thing now, baby. Baby. <laughs> it's you the had main me. thing. You had me there. I was like, he's doing the wrong one. He's- no, I, I looked at the wrong I looked at the wrong one. I was like, what? No, no, no. Brandon, look down. Look down. It's a page break. <laughs> we just talked about the page break. Ah, uh, that's right. It's time for the main thing. And as has been the case for four seasons in the past, uh, this main thing is all about an actual Rick and Morty episode. Tonight, mm. we are talking about season five, episode one, Mort Dinner, Rick Andre. Uh, yeah, it's let's it's get a, it. It's a show. It's, it's <laughs> holy, holy, holy crap. Let's let's get into this. Yes, Mort Dinner, Rick Andre, air date, two thousand twenty-one, June. 20th it is father's day over over in that neck of the woods over the net that neck of the timeline it was written by jeff loveness we all know who jeff loveness is he made sex dragon episode <laughs> clown horror his, uh, but his, his only credit the only the only the only episode <laughs> really worth mentioning it's the only thing he's done uh i think they're gonna fire him from ant-man quantum mania because of it no uh Directed by Jacob Hare, who who is a, a alumni of the show. Special guests, special voice actor guests. Uh, Jim Gaffigan is in there. Tom Kenny, old SpongeBob man himself, and of course, uh, my namesake, Brandon Johnson. That's right. Uh, is in there. Uh, and and with every episode, we love the synopsis is that whoever out there is writing these, we want to get an interview with whoever it is. But for now. Here's the bronopsis. Travis, hit, hit us hit us with the bronopsis. Big men coming for dinner, bruh. <laughs> Better check the booze. 
Well done. <laughs> well done. Well, well, well done, Bernops. I, person. We, I, we, Brandon, you know, t- says that we're we would love to do an interview with whoever writes the Bernops. That is a hundred percent correct. We whoever, <laughs> if, whether it's like some intern, it gets it gets switched out. If it if it's Royland, okay. We, you know, we'll we'll interview him too if we have to. But we yeah. want we want to talk to whoever's writing these Bronopsis because they they are a highlight of, of every week for us. <laughs> yes, uh, but our, our 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 real synopsis, our synopsis, is not as is not as uh, concise. Morty's gone and done it now. Touching the ocean. What next? Slow wine service for Mister Nimbus. A full on Narnia situation. <laughs> Why is our synopsis all questions? I don't. Know. I don't. If, I don't know. if we're ask if we're asking questions of the synopsis, did we actually watch it? Huh? 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 <laughs> uh, let's get into, yeah, let's get into it, it, man. We watched it once yeah. or twice. Um, yeah. So we're. I mean, we'll we'll start from the very beginning. Uh, a very good place yeah. to start. Uh, with with a cold open where we see a whole bunch from from the trailers. Uh, this, I mean, the the trailers that we saw for season five. Uh, it turns out a lot of of those trailers are encapsulated in this episode. Um, Rick is is near death. He's he's dying there on some crystal floating planet. It shows all sorts of different iterations of Rick and Morty. I I haven't had the time yet to fully like do the deep dive and see what yeah. random uh like obscure versions of Rick and Morty are probably hidden in some of those crystals but very Doc cool. and Marty are back there probably yes, I, yes, I, I'm pretty sure absolutely. Yeah. uh but yeah so they they immediately have to take off like uh Rick talks about being a silly silly man and <laughs> uh and so then uh Morty is responsible for getting them out of there and in a moment when when all hope is lost, mm. Morty Morty calls Jessica. Who else would he call? Uh, Who else? And, and 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 has that final you know just before death moment where he's like, you know, I know the timing never worked out between us, but I just want you to know you're great. And when she says, "Hey, let's hang out and watch a movie," everything changes. You, you know, you know that that's that's very similar to to to, to my life, right? Uh, when when I, uh, I I joined the Air Force in in two thousand one, long long time ago, so long, and and uh, the first phone call I could make at in basic training, I, I wasn't to my mom or or my dad. You know, it was it was to my future wife Chelsea, uh, which I mean at that time she didn't want anything to do with me really. Uh, so it was like, who is this? <laughs> who is who? Bar- Barndon? Who is who's that? Um, so Bar- in a way, I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a like more. Oh, but the difference here is, is that uh, that Jessica wants to hang out with Morty and gives him a reason to live. Uh, <laughs> that's the difference. Uh, yeah. re- Morty has a reason to live in this. Uh, so he he crash lands into the ocean, which kicks off the the rest of the episode featuring Mr. Nimbus. Mr. Uh, Nimbus. Who who comes over to the 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 Smith household to work on a peace treaty and that that's that is the core uh conceit of the episode. But then it goes off way it goes off in a, a completely different direction and that that A plot turns into the B plot is a, a very subtle shift which I which I appreciate. Yeah, I, I I found like in the past we used to be able to really clearly differentiate an A plot and a B plot and we would we would use that sometimes to to frame our discussions about the episodes. But in I couldn't really decide in this episode like what was an A plot, what was a B plot. You seem to have sort of two things happening. Obviously the relationship between Rick and Mr. Nimbus, and then there is the exploration of Morty's relationship with Jessica and also just tied into the mix, the the new version of Beth and Jerry, <laughs> the now yeah. sex positive couple who are, are taking Dr. Wong's advice and and trying to enrich their relationship, uh, which may or may not involve a three way with Mr. Nimbus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So so yeah, like let's let's talk about sort of this this Mr. Nimbus character, the 
the relationship with Rick. Um, what were what were your initial impressions of Mr. Nimbus as we got to see him a little bit more throughout throughout the episode? <laughs> uh, uh, the the whole the whole thing with Mr. Nimbus is he is is so not threatening a, at all right and yet and yet he is such a threat <laughs> uh that that rick is, is so deathly afraid of him and and and, and rick exclaiming he owns the pol- he controls the police yeah is 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 strange because uh, which is the same reason like jerry is confused about it he's like you 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 killed you've killed a god or fucked a god or whatever he said about it right uh and you're afraid of somebody who controls the police right um which then like that that kind of comedy goes out through the whole episode until the punchline at the at the very end where you see how strong mr nimbus really is right uh yeah. but uh yeah i mean i i yeah i don't know what, what, do, you, what do you what do you think on that I, I think I think he's a very um, outgoing, uh, very pious sort of. I mean, he's the king of the ocean. He controls the police, so he's he's got <laughs> he's got a lot going for him. He's gonna make the land wet. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, just he's, do it. He's very just do it then. <laughs> glo- just glo- do anything. Warming's gonna beat you to it anyway, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I think as a concept. The, the fact that, you know, Rob Schraub is now an executive producer on this show. Um, I'm not saying he had a lot to do with this concept, but um, a guy who is king of the ocean, who literally controls the police with his pelvic thrusts uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, is is has a has a starfish that sets up his three way hookups for him. I mean, he's just a very complex individual. <laughs> very, very interesting. Um but I think I think he was hilarious. Uh, the the execution of the character was great. Um, the way that they brought in a lot of nautical themes and and just how how different Rick responds to this character compared to anybody else that he deals with. He's always so full of himself, so so sure that he can he can take on any any you know fight, and then he's like basically cowering before this guy while also sending summer out into the what Marianas <laughs> trench to, yeah. to fight a bunch of you know mer people and steal some shell uh yeah he's always got a scheme running but in this case yeah rick rick wanted to make sure it went over the right way <laughs> uh yeah what what i what i really what i really dug was just the uh the antagonism that mr nimbus had because in in like in the trailers and and the storyboards and stuff leading into the season, I didn't know that I really cared about this character that much. I didn't. I didn't think I would really yeah. like him. Uh, when I first watched the episode, I thought, "Oh, okay, it's not too bad." I, I, la- I laughed at the pelvic thrust at the end. Uh, sure. Not just the pelvic thrust. It's not the pelvic thrust. It's the uh, it's the the inertia of the dongage. <laughs> The bulge, that really the the the, the, the gravitas <laughs> of the that bulge. really that really sells it really really takes it home, um, it, but then uh, upon subsequent watches, then I like, no, okay, yeah, Mister Nimbus. I, I'm just gonna say Mister Nimbus a lot now, uh, Mister Nimbus. My name is Mister Nimbus. <laughs> but throughout, but the, the police. <laughs> but throughout the uh, throughout the episode, uh, t- again talking about like the a plot and b plot shift, uh, there is so much stuff that is happening behind the scenes, uh, like the conversations that are going on between them. That anytime Morty goes away, there there is an advancement of that scene that we that the audience doesn't see. Right. That is is interesting to me. That there that there is an actual history and there's a weird uh, negotiation going on. Right. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The, about the not ter- shit the terms of their treaty. I don't right. shit. I, I I I shit in the ocean anyways. <laughs> Stop shitting in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> so so while Rick and Mister Nimbus are having their um, orderly discussion, uh, this is also an opportunity where where Jessica has decided to come over to watch a movie, not interdimensional cable, not Nintendo sixty nine. They're gonna watch a movie <laughs> and they're going to. Uh, but 
she overhears that Morty is responsible for fetching the wine uh, and, and providing that to Mr. Nimbus. And so she asks if Morty can get them a bottle of wine, which seems like not a big ask because, you know, there's lots of crates of that whale wine uh, that they threw into that Narnia portal. And he's like, yeah, he can get some, right? But uh, that <laughs> ends up becoming a lot more... Uh, complicated than it seems as the portal that Rick uses to age the wine. Um, yeah, I don't, it's this concept of this portal is so amazing to me. I love the progression of the timeline on, on that side of things. And it's, it's what really made the episode for me. Like the first time I watched it, I was like, this this is hilarious how they are manipulating time in a way that doesn't feel like time travel, right? It's, yeah, it's, right. It's, it, it kind of fits into the constraints of, of some of the rules that they've, they've placed on the show. But still manipulating a timeline in a way that makes for some uh, amazing uh, different scenes and, and interactions between Morty and uh, I guess the, the hoovy type citizens uh, that live in that land. What, what, what were yeah. your thoughts on, on Morty's exchanges with uh, <laughs> the other side of the portal, I guess? <laughs> well, I, I, I thought that was such a cool, I mean, obviously it's, it's a really, really cool concept. I, I thought having, uh, I'll talk about Nimbus just for one half a second again, yeah. and we'll get into the, this portal. Yeah. They introduced such a, an extravagant out there character that you think, Oh, this is what, this is what the entire episode is going to be about. And they, they, they put such an emphasis on it. And then, uh, then Rick introduces, you know, kind of a benign little, little, uh, little bit of gadgetry with, with this, this Narnia portal. And uh, like, uh, I'm going to get the wine. And the first, and when Morty goes to fetch the wine for the first time, it's still not that special, right? There's, sure. there's, there's still nothing, like that I'm wowed about or that I'm interested about. I'm still interested in, in the dinner, what's happening yeah. with the dinner. And when he comes out and then he talks to Hoovy for, for a little bit about, you know, uh, just being yourself. And yeah, yeah I got, a, I got a girl over I'm nervous. It's like, oh, just, <laughs> just have fun. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then Hoovy goes back in and then it's like thunderstorming. It's dark. and, <laughs> and he t he turns around and and his uh and Bova is is, is dead right yeah. his his wife is dead uh and when he left her uh when he took helped Morty with the wine she was alive and pregnant yes when he comes back in she's dead skeletalized in a chair and he sets the wine down and his son <laughs> who is now is now fully grown comes and stabs him yeah Japheth <laughs> Japheth. Yeah, you weren't I, even born yet. <laughs> and I, that, I and, swore and, to mother I would avenge you. <laughs> or I would avenge and, her. And that is the shift in interest of the entire episode. That is, that, is, that is when the episode turns, and it's no longer about a dinner with Nimbus. It is about what is, what is this interest, what does this part of the story have to do with the rest of the 22-minute the runtime? Uh, I, I just I think that just an amazing bit of of writing transition uh, magic. Oh, magic oh, yeah, tree. absolutely. The way that magic they, tree, the way that they <laughs> constructed the episode to kind of have that shift in gravity from from and, and really they they've interwoven those two plot lines together really well, because by the time you get to the end of the episode and. All hell is broken loose. Everybody's stuck in this this future version of that that world, and and Mr. Nimbus is the one that has to come in and, and kind of save the day. Like it it ties everything together really well to create a really cohesive story through throughout everything. But yeah. I, I I just think about the the two sides of existence uh, on either side of that portal, right? Where you have on one side a teenager who's just trying to get some wine so that he can impress this girl that he goes to high school with. Meanwhile, Rick is having a, a negotiation about, you know, the terms of war for, for land and sea. And, and, and 
Beth and Jerry are trying to convince themselves they want a three way. That's that's one side. And on the other side, you have decades of of history <laughs> where where an entire civilization has has rallied around a singular purpose to protect their 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 existence from a a a a door that only opens once every you know 10 years 10 to 20 years and and how they have constructed a mythology and and there are factions that believe in the purpose and and don't believe in the purpose and uh just the politics involved in it and how much uh-huh. like the the characters age and the way that that the animators and and character designers really did a phenomenal job of 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 showing different stages of some of these characters' lives from from being very small children to being really old ripped dudes who, who <laughs> fight Morty when he comes through um, again. <laughs> do you think he'll show you any mercy? <laughs> uh, yeah. So I I absolutely love that entire arc of 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 their history and how it goes from a a feudal you know system and then all of a sudden morty drops a little bit of rick technology when he's when he's fed up with with them fighting back and then they use that technology to become an even more yeah, advanced yeah. civilization and all of a sudden they end up being you know what is it cyberpunk bird type people and all <laughs> yeah. that, you know why is it always cyberpunk bird uh you know you uh, you, you bring up a uh, a a very very interesting concept right it's it, for game of thrones fans out there right the idea that there's there's some kind of mythological uh, creature that exists out there but some a lot of people don't believe in it because they've never seen it they've yeah. lived generations and they've not they've not seen it at You've all built your life on lies father <laughs> <laughs> and i i think that it, i think that is super cool because you know who's this who's to say that something exists out there that, that people believe in and, and we like, no, that, that's, you know, that's obviously that's not real. Jesus wasn't real and Jesus isn't coming back. Right. It's, or maybe he was real, but you know, he's not, a, he's, you know, he's not the son of God, whatever. And then, you know, in like, all of a sudden a door, a portal appears and then Jesus walks through. He's like, what has he got? More wine. He's got moral. He's got more. I, I, but I, I, I think just the kind of that that piece of nature is of of religion and 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 faith is is, is interesting. Um, uh, I was gonna say something more about the the, the portal stuff, but um, why don't, why don't you why don't you take it since I okay. lost track of okay. that? Okay, that's fair. So take it, I, take it away. I, I, I think there are a lot of questions that that pop up in this episode as as a as a as as a result of of the manipulations of portals and things like that obviously there there is something to be said about just I remember what I was going to say by the way I do remember what I was going to say okay, but good what is it what is it seeing as you no, I mean I, no, I hate I hate to interrupt you it's too late you've already done it the damage <laughs> is done Brandon okay remember what you were going to say so I can say what I was going to say real quick which is if you watch solar opposites one of the the one of the really interesting parts of solar opposites the, you know the aliens are are interesting but uh, the stuff that's happening in the wall that is is super serious it, it it it's melodramatic and there's 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 intrigue there's plot and there's there's backstabbing all that stuff is really really interesting in this like kind of separate world from the aliens itself yeah. and in 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 some ways that's how like the backstory of what was going on in the portal world where like the 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 whole like dark wizard he's like and i i i built my magic based off lie i became the lord of lies or whatever yeah, yeah. oh it's all true it was all true oh, it's, oh, it's all true yeah. god it's real <laughs> 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 but then even even beyond that you know adam the traveler the one who will pass through the door like that yeah. that whole thing right and um and and how there's like a weird symbology with uh, uh, an owl god that that says disappointing or whatever in Dan Harmon's voice when uh, <laughs> when 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 Adam gets stabbed with a corkscrew by Jessica and she gets sucked into the portal uh, side of of existence 
uh yeah it's it's all it's all very intriguing very interesting uh there there is a huge question right be, with with jessica's long-term existence in the portal world right she's in there for a while and when they ultimately come out like morty's like hey you know you want to watch that movie and she's like time time yes you know and she goes into this whole monologue about the existence of time (laughs) and she's she's looked into the face of time and all these things and and she ultimately leaves as a time god uh, her words not mine and it, it's really interesting because, you know, Morty had that moment. You know, they they, they kissed. It, it, it was there was possible that this was going to be something. And and nope, she got sucked into a portal, as, you know, because he had <laughs> to touch the ocean. Um, and, and now she's she's off with this new level of understanding about the universe and time. So. What do you think, Brandon? Do you think this is the end of of Morty and Jessica? Do you think there will be more opportunities? Do you think they're gonna they're gonna kind of like brush <laughs> this aside and let Jessica be Jessica again, or is this is this the start of a new version of Jessica in the show? Will will they? Won't they? This is basically the Ross and Rachel of of Rick and Morty. They were on uh, a time break. <laughs> I. I I I don't I don't think Morty is done w- with Jessica, but yeah. he, here's here's an interesting thing. As you as you rewatch it, you listen to you know the it, the things that she says and kind of that that theme. That she's on the couch and she's waiting for Morty to come back. And every time he leaves, he 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 does come back eventually. And he's like, "Oh, let me get that wine." She's like, "I thought that's what you were getting." He's like, "Oh no, no, I got caught it up. I'm like, I'm I'm heading to get it now." And and she says to him, "That's okay. I'll wait for you." And you know, she she tussles her hair a little bit, um, and then she goes away for a long time, getting sucked into the portal, and she she did she didn't end up waiting for him. Um, they they went their separate ways. Her her little like I'm a time god thing uh, to the the dude who was hitting on her. Um, it, it shows that you know she's 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 available still. Sure, sure. She yeah. just there just needs she Morty just needs a little more time. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. It's all about time. It's all about timing. They can never get the timing right. Yeah. Um. There, there is a moment uh, when when Rick is pulled through the portal uh, as as he's trying to rescue Morty and Jessica, uh, and the the Hoovians, uh, for lack of a better term, have progressed their technology so far that they're able to immediately suck out all of the cybernetic enhancements that that Rick has has armed himself with, uh, and he's so, he's sort of at a loss at, at the end of this episode, and and, and as a result. Uh, needs Mr. Nimbus's help to uh to to get out. <laughs> do Do you think there's gonna be any like long term effects of of this scene? Do you think this is gonna show a new version of Rick that doesn't isn't all tricked out with gadgets, or is this just a momentary lapse? And by the next episode, he could have all new tech reinstalled. <laughs> yeah, I I I th- I think it's uh, a momentary lapse because it, it, all the all the gadget at gadgetry got ripped out, which means he can replace it with bigger and better things, Upgrades. right? Up, New up, up, technology. Up, up, upgrades. Yeah, it's, I it's, I played like, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I know I know how you know how upgrading. Up. You know how this works. <laughs> it's like Iron Man. He just makes a new kind of suit, right? That, he just, that, he just that's right. It. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I agree with you. I th- I think this will. This will just be a speed bump on on the the course of of Rick's enhancements. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any well, well, any other questions that that got you thinking here in, in the episode? Yeah, I, I I saw this on. Uh, where did I see? I, mean, I think I saw it on Reddit. Um, already, uh, but uh, like somebody mentioning that there was no lack of there was no mention of space space Beth. And season four ended off with with that, so them not mentioning Space Beth at all was like, well, what, what we just forgot about that. We just forgot about that aspect of it. Um, so I, I don't. I'm not going to ask you where Space Beth is, but I will just put that into the. I wonder where Space Beth is. 
if, uh, I, if I had to, if I had to wager a guess, I'd say space. Um, hmm. but, but you know, that's I didn't that's think about that. No, that's free. good. That's that's, that's good call. I, I think maybe, maybe I, she's maybe maybe she's at uh, you know, like In and Out. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe she waiting in line. Maybe she went to the movies. Uh, and she just <laughs> missed this event. I I don't think the lack of space, Beth, in this episode is uh telling of a complete lack of space, Beth, in the future. I just think she's not featured in this episode. I think she that that version of Beth will be a character that comes and goes throughout throughout the series. Uh, at least at least I hope. I, I I would hope to see more space, Beth, in the future. Yeah, I I I, I agree. I I agree with that. Uh, kind of sentiment. I we probably will probably see her about as often as we see uh, Mr. Poopy Butthole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, definitely more often than we than we see President Morty. Yeah, and, uh, or or me seeks. Yeah, probably or, more than me seeks. <laughs> probably more than me. But though we've seen a lot of me seeks in the last season or, uh, or so. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Um. All right. It is. It is now time for <clears throat> me to lose my speaking voice. Uh, <laughs> and, and a a segment that we haven't gotten to really address oh my in gosh. quite a long time, but it's time for some of our favorite lines, those little bits, little bits uh, from the episode that stood out to us or that we really enjoyed. Uh, the the first one for me starts off in that cold open when when Morty is is talking to Jessica, and she says, "Being nervous is kind of selfish sometimes." Um. Good for everybody. Good for everybody to to take to heart. You know, it's it's not about you. Um, you know, just put yourself out there and see what happens, right? So I I, I feel I feel so called out because you know how 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 full of anxiety I get when there's a bunch of new people and uh and uh, in the they're not even paying attention to me. No one's paying attention yeah. to me. I know that. Nobody cares that I'm Stop walking being through selfish, a, through a lobby. That's what I'm gonna say to you now. When 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 you're like texting me like oh gosh there's so many people here I'm like stop being selfish, just Jessica knows better. <laughs> stop being selfish. Yeah okay all right all right jerk. Uh, and you know what I'm gonna start doing? I'm gonna start walking into the lobby of of a uh, convention or whatever, and and just yell let's lick dicks, <laughs> which uh... which is a great which is a great line as as Rick sends. Uh, summer to to do his dirty work <laughs> yeah i because she can be trusted uh i love i love summer's appearances in this episode unfortunately she's not featured very much but the 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 little amounts that we get of summer in this episode really just continue to drive home the fact that she can she can take care of business uh and and she she is an awesome character who has really developed since the beginning of the show yeah 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 for sure uh, what, one of the things that I found really funny, and I didn't really catch it the first time I watched the episode, but uh, everybody knows Mr. Nimbus is coming, that he's the king of the ocean, and then <laughs> a, a float uh, of oceanic proportions comes, uh, you know, rushing down the street with horns blaring, and Jerry turns to Rick and says, is that Mr. Nimbus? <laughs> As if it would be anyone else, Jerry. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's a really subtle joke, but it it cracks me up now when I think about it. Yeah, I I I looked at your note in here about that, and then I paid extra attention to it th this time. And and yeah, he does like he does the Homer whisper, and I forget the <laughs> I forget the term for it, right? Where it's it's whispering, but you're whispering it loud enough so everybody can hear it. Right. Uh, <laughs> is that Mister Nimbus? Uh, so, um, it's I. A, a, a lot. This this was out there actually a couple of days before the episode aired on, on Reddit, and it was actually it was, I think it was taken down because you know spoilers and stuff like that. No, no, it was it was on a, a different subreddit that that we saw. Uh, you sent it to me, and it was it was the I haven't been to a full week of school in years. I don't know shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, very very telling about Morty's. Um... The, the 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 costs that Morty is suffering due to all this adventuring, he's getting a he's getting a different kind of education. You know, it's yeah. he, he'll appreciate that one day. Not I, I, he, traditional schooling isn't for everyone, Morty. Sometimes you got to be an asshole. I learned that from my grandpa. There you go. There you go. Uh, there there is a clip uh, when 
it's 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 Beth, Jerry, uh, Rick, and Morty all in the kitchen. Mr. Nimbus is over in the other room, and they're and they're whispering to each other about what's going on. And 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 Rick suddenly bursts out. You see this whisper kitchen Frasier bullshit you're making me do. Uh, <laughs> for starters, love it. Love the reference to Frasier. But then the second level of like Spencer Grammer being the voice of Summer. And oh yeah, her, that's her right. Dad Kelsey Grammer's show Frasier, sort of just tying it all together. Um, yeah, I just I just thought that that gave me an extra appreciation for for the classic uh, sitcom trope that, that that they were pulling off in the episode. Uh, two 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 little bits of little bits of of <laughs> canonical uh, uh, at things. One is when. Uh, Nimbus is telling Rick about how he used to respect him and he used to fear him, and now and now he doesn't. Uh, not since not since his wife Diane passed away or something like that. And Rick yells, "Don't establish canonical backstory with me." Uh, they just cut. They cut off. They cut off before the end of the <laughs> line. But it's 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 terrific. I like I like that yeah. they that he speaks uh, sort of to the fourth wall of that. And, yeah, yeah. And then and then in the second one with that that you also have on here was Nimbus saying, I liked your other one more. What was his name? Kyle? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which which I think, you know, is another thing. Between the Diane and between Kyle is is one of those things that that, you know, theory crafters in the world of Rick and Morty are gonna latch that might latch on to, right? All like, right. And oh, who who is Kyle? Ooh, ooh, this is oh, this is juicy. Yeah. <laughs> Unity, you have to help me out because my brain is throwing a flag right now. And we've only watched the episode a few times, but I'm pretty sure Nimbus talks about Nancy in uh, in in Rick's backstory. I could be wrong. Maybe he says Diane, but we're, it's up to you. Send us a tweet. Let us know which one of us oh. remembers it correctly. Because, but <laughs> in either way, he he's trying to establish some sort of backstory, creating creating relationships in 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 the past. Uh, and yeah, either way, I, I, we don't even know like who Rick's been with since, since <laughs> we're going to go check right now while we're recording. <laughs> no, 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 he is. He's, he's like, no, saying, no. He's, he's taking the power from your hands, unity. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not all right. Yeah. So Kyle, who is Kyle? We'll, we'll have to find out. <laughs> um, and then I think, I mean, the only other like little bit in here is the interdimensional bit for Nintendo 64, yes. which, which. <laughs> Which we see when they turn on the TV, and there's there's a pretty interesting <laughs> sound clip. <laughs> oh, of Justin, oh, Nintendo! Justin oh, Rook. Nintendo! What are you doing to me? Oh, what are you doing to me, Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> with, with a with a dressed up SNES in his hands. Uh, but then uh, it is a, then again referenced later on uh, as as <laughs> Rick is fighting with Nimbus, uh, talking about how he spends his days with the Nintendo sixty nine. So. Um, some great little <laughs> shout outs there and not, I'm, I'm not clear on how they got that approved or, or what the legal, uh, discussions are for, uh, with Nintendo to, to make that happen. But kudos, kudos for, that, for, that, for getting it out there. That that's right. Yeah. Because even like even Squanch Tendo, right. Had to change their name to Squanch games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so, so how, how they got Nintendo on there is, yeah. Oh, Oh, Nintendo. <laughs> what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Nintendo? Uh, oh, yeah. uh, is is there is there anything else you want to you want to say about this the season five premiere? Um, I'll I'll I have one other thing in my notes that is in reference to this season's title sequence. Every season they they mix up the title sequence a little bit. We get brand new uh, clips, really really quick shots of of things that uh, sometimes appear in episodes of the show, and and usually there's some. Uh, just straight up MacGuffins and, and things that exist nowhere else except the title sequence. A couple of great clips in this one. One of them being Rick giving Noob Noob CPR. <laughs> um, it was great seeing Noob Noob again. Uh, and then Morty making a golf shot, like in what looks like a golf <laughs> tournament. Um, <laughs> yeah. That that was just cool to see. So uh, I don't know how the title sequence will change or develop over the, over the course of the season, but very excited for... Um, which of those scenes we will actually see in an episode, yeah. and which ones are are just for the sake of of the opening music? I I, I thought it, I thought it was uh, coincidental that there is a Vindicators web series coming out later this fall, 
uh, and Noob Noob is is in the is in the opening credits. Yeah. D- does that does that mean anything? I don't I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We didn't. We didn't uh, get a chance to ask Erica or Sarah about uh, the past, present, or future where this this Vindicator series fits That's right. in. That's right. So, and if you maybe have no idea what we're talking speculation. about, speculation. If you have no idea what we're talking about, as soon as you're done listening to this episode, go back and check out our previous episode where we interview the executive producers for the new web series and uh, talk all about the history of the Vindicators and, and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, plus, you know, if, if if it's been a while, go check out all of the episodes that you missed uh, <laughs> between seasons four and five. Um, I think that about does it, unless you have any lingering thoughts about the episode, Brandon. N- not about the episode. The last thought I have is about those who are just joining us, those who came back to join us, and those who will continue to join us. We appreciate everything that you do, which which is listen to us babble on and, and pretend like we, you know, have some kind of interesting voices or, or opinions. You you're you're great, and uh, we cannot we cannot, but we'll continue to try emphasizing just how important that is to us. Yeah, we we thank everybody that has come back to to listen to this episode. If you are new here or you are returning and you're not subscribed on your podcatcher of choice hit that subscribe button Uh, if you're enjoying these episodes leave a review leave a comment wherever you consume this show we appreciate it and if you so choose to share on your social media of choice that would be a terrific way to let others know about the show and and help us uh, continue to grow this little this little fun experiment that is interdimensional RSS. That's uh, right. We're we're excited. Season five is here. We have episodes week after week. So uh, come back next time, and we will have even more to say about you know Rick and Morty. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, and until next time, I am Brandon. I'm Travis. We'll see you on the other side for the next episode. Bye. Bye.